the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we have, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us. And for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, forgives us all our sins. As a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you who do truly repent and believe in him the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On the other hand, and by the same authority, I declare to the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence, God has not forgiven their sins and will assuredly visit their iniquities upon them if they turn not from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Christ before the day of grace be ended. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for, offer, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, attend to the Word of God. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in the all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. 
Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will pray responsively from Psalm 95. We are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of his hand. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We are the people of God's pasture, and the sheep of his hand. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter. For this reason... Because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. in his glory and all the angels with him then he will sit on his glorious throne before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep on his right but the goats on his left and the king will say to those on his right come you who are blessed by my father Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. 
I was in prison, and you came to me. And the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? And he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord.
Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Amen. How is your relationship with your God, your Lord, your King? It's common for many people at the end of each calendar year to look back on the year past from a secular perspective and to see what we've accomplished and rejoice over what we've achieved and refocus ourselves to do better next year in those areas of our lives where we have fallen short of our own and our families and our jobs expectations of us. Taking that example to heart, what better time than this last Sunday of the church year this Sunday we call Christ the King Sunday, to do some serious spiritual self-examination, to engage in a personal inventory of our thoughts and our words and our deeds over against what we know is God's will and God's expectations of us. God's will and God's expectations of us as individuals and for us. This is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. And what better time to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God about our desire and our commitment to do better in days and months and years to come. Are we ready, you and I, to do that? Ready and willing, honestly, to look at our lives as God looks at them? To measure our lives' work over against what God has called us to do and to be. To look deep inside. To determine what motivates us in our day-to-day -day activities. Why we live as we do live. And confidently to dream. To dream about what God has planned for us when this life is over. How will he judge us? How will he reward us? Or how will he punish us for what we have thought and said and done? In the Gospel appointed for Christ the King Sunday, St. Matthew's vision of the final judgment we see Jesus coming into this world as judge over all peoples and all nations. He knows us all by name. He knows us all by deed. He knows where we have devoted ourselves to being his witnesses, his representatives in this world. And he knows where, out of fear or embarrassment or stubbornness or COVID-19, we blame everything else on it. Why not blame that, too? or whatever we have failed, as the hymn calls us. And as we sang last Sunday, stand up, stand up for Jesus. The apostle, directed by the Holy Spirit, sets the scene for what is going to happen in this reading with these words. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne, before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Jesus already knows all that he needs to know. He dwells in our inner core, he hears our prayers, he knows our desires. Thanks be to God, he is prepared to speak as our advocate before the Father to guarantee the outcome for each of us will be as he has predetermined. The account of the final judgment continues. Then the king will say to those at his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungry and you gave me food. 
was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Fascinating how the righteous respond. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and give you food? And feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers or sisters, you did it to me. The righteous, the faithful, those who are already in a healthy living relationship with the Son of God, Christ the King, follow in the love of their Lord, Christ the King, and do what is right, what is compassionate, what is Jesus' way? Not because he demands such behavior from us, but out of what one commentator calls a spontaneous sympathy that regards only the other person's good. They love naturally from the heart. Why? Because God first loved them. How can the righteous do this? It's simple. Again, the same commentator says, only the person who has received forgiveness learns to forgive and to encounter others with compassion. But since Jesus forgives and loves all those willing to accept his love, everyone can love her or his neighbors. There's also another side to the coin, though, isn't there? Then the king will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Surprised, maybe even shocked, they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Sad, isn't it? Truly I say to you, he says, as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away to eternal punishment, but to the righteous, but the righteous into eternal life. These, the ones who did not do it to the least of Jesus' brothers and sisters, are those who are satisfied by doing the bare minimum that they think they need to do to fulfill the law. And doing that bare minimum required to fulfill the law, the cursed, those quick to self-congratulate and slow to operate by the spirit of the law are rejected by Christ the King. They just don't. get down to the foundation of what they really believe. They care about themselves, first and foremost. Christ the King, you see, in Matthew's final judgment, had absolute authority to forgive or to condemn. In his role as king and judge, he knew all that was in the hearts of not only the sheep and the goats in today's gospel but he knows what is in the hearts of all people of all times and all places. And don't fool yourselves, that means us too. He had every right to seek and find all our sins, those known 
and those we thought we had hidden where no one knows but us and demand that we get condemnation, the condemnation we deserve because of our sins. But in his grace and mercy, if he sees in us even the tiniest bit of sorrow and repentance for those sins, if he sees in us a growing desperation for that close living relationship he longs to have with us, he wipes away those sins and offers us, guilty and undeserving as we are, he offers us eternal life. Truly a God of law and of gospel. Truly a God of punishment and of total absolution. In the end, our Lord Jesus, Christ the judge, Christ the king, Christ our Lord and Savior, wants all of us, each and every one of us, with him in paradise. Again, I ask, how's your relationship with your King, your Lord, your God? Reach out to Him in love, and you will experience freedom in every way imaginable. Life in all its fullness, and everlasting fellowship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise God, Christian sisters and brothers. Christ is our King. Hallelujah. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's join together as we confess in the words of the Apostles' Creed our faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Father, we praise and adore you for your Son, Christ Jesus, our beautiful Savior, the King of creation. We thank you for his holy life, his innocent suffering and death, and his glorious resurrection that bestows life, forgiveness, health, and salvation on us. Though we are your poor, unworthy servants, you have made us the sisters and brothers of your beloved Son and heirs of your kingdom. Blessing and honor, praise and adoration be yours, Holy Father, for the sake of your Son and the power of your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have made your Son King of creation and head of your holy church. Bind that church to Christ with cords of love. Make it unswerving in faith and bold in witness to him. And use it to draw all people to his cross, there to acclaim him as Lord, King, and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have made your persecuted church a visible sign of the suffering of Christ himself. Grant that all who are afflicted for his sake may also, like the sun, moon, and stars, bear witness to the beauty of his holiness and the glory of his love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have made your Son our Savior and Lord. Fill the people of this congregation, Emmanuel of Flatville, with your Holy Spirit, so that in all we say and do, among all people we encounter, we acclaim Jesus Christ as Son of God and Son of Man. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have made this land rich with resources and resplendent with the virtues of freedom, justice, opportunity, and honesty. Grant that all who live here may be responsible stewards of those resources, tireless examples of those virtues, and thankful sharers of every blessing with which you have graced us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have made your Son the Lord of the nations. By your Holy Spirit, conform the hearts of rulers and people all over this globe to the heart of Christ. And let his peace reign undisturbed in every land. Especially these days, Lord God, we pray for our own dear country. Bitterly divided after a long and nasty campaign and an as yet rancorous elected election. Fill leaders on both sides of the aisle with your grace and peace and the ability always and ever to put the well-being of our country and its people first in their hearts and minds and actions, even if the election results are not what we had hoped for. Grant that future elections will be administered with more transparency and with an eye to guaranteeing fairness to all candidates. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have made your Son our light, our joy, and our crown. Grant that his strong, saving love might accompany those who serve our country here and abroad. Fill them with honor, courage, and wisdom, and bring them home in safety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You've made your sun fairer than sunlight, stars, meadows, or woodlands. Let his beauty, healing, and compassion cause all sorrowing hearts to sing. Deliver all those who are suffering from disease, and especially all those affected, both those who are victims and those who are the families. COVID-19 virus, and allow, O oh God, that you deliver all your people in need from trial or trouble from whatever their afflictions. And we remember especially before you today Kim Busboom and Del Grusin. We ask you to restore those who are ill to the fellowship of all who cared for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Gracious Father, you have made your sun to shine more brightly than all of heaven's angels. We thank you for the lives of the faithful departed who already see his glory face to face. We especially remember this weekend, Martha Bohr. Bring comfort and strength to her family and to all families dealing with death in these days which are difficult for them. And fill, fill them all, fill those families with your faith and your love now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer and graciously grant all that glorifies you and benefits our poor and broken world for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join together to pray that prayer which our Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. People of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you, God. God.
week again, and there will also be a service on Thanksgiving Day at 9 a.m., and it'll be available after that on tape, of course. Uh, thanks for being with us today. God bless you and keep you as you live out your life by his grace, free of disease and trial and trouble, this day and every day. Amen. Amen.